Hi everyone, I'm Margot Jacobs. I'm the Director of Development for Campaigns at the UN Foundation. In my life prior to the UN Foundation, I spent a number of years as a fundraising consultant. I helped the United Methodist Church to start their Imagine No Malaria campaign and traveled the country for two years talking to churches about this issue and building my own story of why I care about this. And I also had the chance to work with Kiwanis International on their Eliminate project, which is focused on maternal and neonatal tetanus. So I have a little experience with fundraising and inspiring communities to get involved, but mostly my passion area is malaria, and this is the issue that matters the most to me. So I'm here today to talk to you a little bit about best practices of fundraising and how you can make any events that you decide to do as successful as possible. Um, so before I get started though, I want to introduce Linda Kamali and I want her to share her story with you quickly in just a couple of minutes and why she's up here uh, and, and what she's done to support Nothing But Nets. <laughs> it does sound like a roaming thunder. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I hope everyone's um, enjoying the event so far. Um, my name is Linda Kamali. I am from Downingtown, Pennsylvania. Um, I'm here with my daughter, Catherine Kamali, um, who has been a spokesperson. Go ahead, stand up, Catherine, wave to everybody. Uh, she's um, almost 14. Um, she's been um, working with Nothing But Net since she was five. Um, we talked about safe um, places uh, earlier, and Catherine used to enjoy getting up in front of the microphone in large groups. Not so much anymore. Um, so, um, so that's okay. That's what mom is here for, to take care of those events. So, um, so yeah. So. Eight years ago, um, we started working with the, with the uh, Nothing But Nets campaign. Um, basically, how it all started, I'm going to try to keep it as brief as I can for you. I watched a video um, on PBS called Malaria Fever Wars. Um, it was all about malaria. Every 30 seconds, a child dies of this deadly disease caused from a mosquito bite that if you have this mosquito net over top of you, you can stay safe. I was blown away. It's one of those things where you know about malaria, you know about bed nets. Do you put it all together and understand what's really going on? So the next morning, after a very, very restless night, I was sharing with my husband what this program was all about. Catherine was five. My son, Joseph, was three. They're sitting there eating their Honey Nut Cheerios, happy as clams. And I'm telling my husband, I, I really want to send some nets. I want to at least send four for, you know, in representation of our family. And Catherine says, every 30 seconds, a child dies from a mosquito bite? And I, I couldn't believe she was even listening and paying attention. I said, yeah, yeah. And she said, and if they have a net over their, sleeping over their bed, they're going to be safe? I said, yeah. And she said, well, why aren't we sending nets? And I said, I, I'm trying to convince your father that we want to send some nets right now, you know? <laughs> Come on, work with me here. And she said, well, we need to send more nets, Mom. These kids, this is, this is absurd. She was, she was irate. She was an irate five-year-old at the table. Um, so within about a week's time, we were at our church, um, United Methodist members, and um, we were at our church, and she goes to our, our um, director of children's ministries and says, we need to send nets to Africa. They need them every 30, check, every 30 seconds a child dies. We need to send some nets. And um, our director said, will you get up in front of the church and say that? And she goes, yeah, of course I will. Um, so that weekend, she raised a little over $3,000, um, literally just by getting up and talking about it. Um, it was extraordinary. And what ended up happening was Nothing But Nets hadn't even been created yet. We sent our money to the United Nations Foundation. Nothing But Nets was in the process of being created. We got a call, and they said, hey, would you guys like to be spokespeople for this campaign? And I asked Catherine, and she goes, well, I can only do it in the afternoon because I have AM kindergarten. So you'll have to work that out, Mom. And I said, I, I, think, I think they've got some flexibility there. Um, <laughs> we missed a few days here and there, but um, that was really the beginning um, of our story. And as we continue to talk about fundraising practices, the things that we've done, we'll share some of you know, our, our best practices and some of the, the great creative ways that we've been able to raise money. So th thank you so much for being here, and I'm looking forward to you know, sharing these practices with you. I absolutely love the Kamali story. It's been with me for years and I share it with everyone because it's about passion, right? It's about your passion, whatever that is, and sharing that passion with others, sharing that story. So the first thing I wanted to go over here, you can't quite see that graphic that's up there, but basically what it's telling you is, um, last year, what's the breakdown of how people gave? And what it's saying is that 72% of donations came from individuals. And if you add that with bequests, which is another 8%, and bequests all come from individuals, 80% of giving comes from an individual. 
that's why we say people give to people and they give to especially their friends. They give because, you know, they're inspired by Catherine's passion as a five year. They're inspired by their community members. You didn't first go to some miscellaneous school or church. You went to your church and you talked to your church first and then it went from there and, and on and beyond. Um, so people give to their friends. Uh, quick question. Who in the room, by a show of hands, participated in the ice bucket challenge? <laughs> and why did you do it? Someone called you out, right? Someone said, will you do the ice bucket challenge? You give because somebody asked you to give. And how much did you give? Was it, was, was it told to you in that video how much you're supposed to give? Yay or nay? Yeah, I'm seeing heads nod. Yep, you were asked for a specific amount of money, whether you did the challenge or whether you didn't do the challenge. For nothing but nuts, what's, what's the ask? Ah, there we go. Specific request. People respond to a specific request because they can say yes, no, or maybe. People also really like recognition. Um, so when I, uh, <laughs> a woman never tells her age, but I'm going to. In August, I turned 31, and I asked, yeah, so yeah, old. So old. Um, <laughs> When I hit 29, I swore I was going to stop telling that. Um, so I turned 31 in August, and for my birthday, I chose to follow in Naomi's footsteps. And I said on Facebook, I wanted 10 of my friends to donate $31 so that all together we could send 31 bed nets for my 31st birthday. It was a specific request, a specific deadline, and it was a specific request for a number of people. And I figured this is something that I could do. I knew I, through my Facebook, I, I might not have as many followers as Leo, but I have enough people that I could get 10 donors of $31. So that was my specific ask. Now, I also said if I can get 10 people to do that, I will match it personally. I will give you the recognition of doubling your gift, and I will shout, um, give you a shout out. So, so I asked for a specific amount, but then I also recognized them, because every time a donor contributed to my uh, my donate your birthday campaign, I tagged them on Facebook, I emailed them a thank you, all of those tools are easily available to me through the platforms on nothingbutnets.net, um, and, uh, and then I emailed them just to say thank you so much for helping me reach my goal. So my goal was $310, and then I matched that as soon as we hit it, and in the end I ended up raising $844, because it was simple, it was manageable, and it was something people could respond to. Oh, no, no. It's no $3,000, but still, it was what I could do. Um, but people also give because they feel passionate themselves. It's not because they've been having their arm twisted. It's because they, they want to continue giving because this is something that matters to them. So keeping people informed, sharing your story, but then helping them create their own story is also really important. OK, so um, this, is, this is important, and this is like I said, what I tried to do through my Donate Your Birthday campaign. I asked others to join me in making a gift to Nothing But Nets. That's more genuine than saying, can you give? Can, will you do this? Will you do something for me? It's will you join me in the commitment that I have made to contribute to Nothing But Nets. So we're all going to say this together. If you can't see it on the screen, it says, I want you to join me in sending nets and saving lives. All right, on the count of three. Ready, set, one, two, three. Anytime you do anything where you're asking someone else to do something, it's better if you've done it first. So please consider your own contribution before you ask others to make a contribution as well. It'll just make everything a lot easier. Okay, so setting your goal. Once you've decided that you want to do something on behalf of Nothing But Nets, break it down. Make it manageable. Think about how much you want to come in through fundraising activities. Is that a bake sale? Is it passing the bucket? Is it, you know, what is it that you're going to do at, um, through, through various activities to raise money? What are you going to get from individual gifts? I knew I had 10 people that could give me $31, and so I made that my individual gift uh, bucket right there. And then I knew that I would match that, so I knew that I could get to, you know, secretly knew I could get to $620. Um, and then organizational gifts. Are you a member of a JCI local organization? Does your local organization have a uh, treasury, a foundation? Can they make a small commitment that's going to help bolster it you know, and continue to emphasize that message of join us in what we are doing as an organization? Maybe your church has a, has a mission fund or your, um, your synagogue, or maybe uh, your school can contribute a little bit to help match the funds that are being raised. Uh, local companies and businesses, what else do you think you can get from that? Can you get maybe $100, $500? 
set all of these individual goals and then make that your total goal altogether. Okay, so these are all the logistics of what you need to do ahead of time, but I'm gonna turn it over to Linda for the next two and she's gonna talk about how you prepare yourself to, to do these fundraisers. Something that's unique in, in our story for Catherine and I is that I was taught this. I, I knew about malaria, but I was taught it through this program. So that was one of our messages was we learned all about every 30 seconds a child die, you know, was dying. So that was our main goal was we wanted to teach because we wanted to give that, um, that judgment to someone else. You know, let me teach you about what I've learned. This means a lot to me. I really hold this heavy in my heart. Let me teach you about what I've learned and then you make the choice of whether or not you wanna buy a bed net. 9.99 times out of 10, people were with us when we shared that story, when we shared about the program that we saw, when we, when we shared about the passion that our family had taken on, when Catherine said, this is ridiculous that children are dying from a disease, that all they need is a net over their head and they're going to be safe. It just didn't make any sense to her. Um, so that was how we kind of started, was we became teachers and we taught and we shared the story and we went to churches and on, you know, joking around about Sunday mornings, for years and years, we went to churches all over the place. We just were invited. We just went and we shared the story. Some of the little simple things that we did, and I can tell you that, you know, it's been eight years since we started. I was home full time at the time. That helps. <laughs> it helps a lot. Um, I'm, I work full time now, but I was home full time. So we were able to be creative. I had two young creative kids. One of the first things my kids wanted to do was they wanted to create the scene. Right there is what we created. Catherine was five, Joseph was three when they created that diorama sitting there with the family under it. And what we would do is we would do a skit for, our, for the church that we were visiting. We would do a skit without a net. My son was the best mosquito. He loved to, zzz, he loved to sting and go right in. It was very exciting for him. And then we would show how the net would protect someone. They got it. Kids got this. Kids walked out of here. We're like, we're sending nets. That's the end of it. You know, they would take it back to schools. We saw that graph earlier, how it just expands and it just gets larger. It's so true. I've seen it in action for eight plus years. And then about a year into it, we were trying to think, we were starting to feel a little stale. We, you know, the, the funds weren't coming in as much. And we were like, ah, what should we do? Catherine came up with this idea. She said, everyone loves gift certificates. Dad's a teacher. He gets gift certificates left and right, and he always gets excited when they're restaurants and they're, you know, all this uh, exciting stuff. Let's create a gift certificate. And we were like, how do we do that? And Catherine came up with this idea of a bed net gift certificate. Now, Catherine's got a couple. She can kind of walk around and show them to folks. I'm sure she's thrilled about that. Um, <laughs> she'll live. Uh, <laughs> So she created this bed net gift certificate, and it tells the story in just a few sentences, hand decorated by Catherine, her brother, very early on in the beginning. They became very, very popular, so we reached out to schools, we got church, kids from church help, Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, decorating like crazy. Holiday time at, um, around our house is gift certificate crazy. $10 for a gift certificate. You buy one, you're buying a net, but you can give it as a gift. So now you know the message, and now you're sharing the message. One of the really cool things about these, it was scary at the time, but I can look back and laugh now. Um, I don't remember the year, maybe 2007, um, we were um, interviewed for the New York Times. It was a very little, it, we thought we were gonna be way, way in the back of the health section, maybe the religion section. Didn't think we were gonna get much press. Um, it, was a, it was a really light interview. Here, we wake up that morning and it's the front page of the New York Times. They had visited us at a church, we did a presentation, and he had, the gentleman that wrote the article talked about the bed negative certificates. He gave the world my email. Um, <laughs> and I didn't have internet access at the time. This is like a while ago. I was home, we, you know, we were budgeting. I was going to the library to check my email and I'd go in and there'd be 300, 400. I gotta get my hands on these bed negative certificates. We sold. There were some holiday seasons that we sold like $30,000 worth of bed naked certificates. That was the one year that we had to actually reach out to the United Nations Foundation and say, we need some money for postage stamps. Um, <laughs> because it was just, it just got so big. But it started out small. And that's what's really important is whether you're gonna be a teacher and kind of do it the way that we did it, or if you're gonna go and use organizations and things like that, for us what worked is start at our church, go to some local churches, and it just continued and continued. And, and Aaron spoke this morning as well about don't being afraid to pick up the, the phone and call someone. Um, Patty Wheeler, who was our director of children's ministries at the time, called our local, our daily local newspaper who came, took pictures, wrote a beautiful article. Eventually the Philadelphia Inquirer saw it. 
They did an article, eventually the, the news saw it, and before you know it, just the story just gets larger. And then we're on the New York Times, we were on CNN, and, and being bold, we were joking around earlier how um, the, the reporter made a mistake about Catherine on live CNN TV. Catherine said, no, that's not correct. I'll correct you here, and it's live. But when you use your voice, be bold. You know, Go deep in why you're here and what you're, what you're doing and why this affects you. Um, some of us are here because we just absolutely believe wholeheartedly that we can get rid of this disease and we can bring it down to near zero deaths. And then there are others that believe in the organization that we're here and, and supporting. And it's great, whatever, your, whatever mission or passion is bringing you here, whether it's humanity, your faith, school, or even a little selfishness of, you know what, I think this is going to help my res resume a little bit. Deep, deep down, you know you're doing something pretty special. And when we look at these numbers of how much we've done over the last eight years, it just inspires me so much more to just continue to be able to share and spread. Um, so that's just a little piece. And, and come in with, with lots of tangible stuff. Kids, man, where's the New Jersey table over here? Kids, man, you guys rock big time because you have a really powerful voice. How, have you ever been under a bed net? Yeah. Isn't it awesome? Like to, it's, and, it, and you get to feel what it feels like to be safe. So when you imagine those children, and for those of you who didn't ever have the opportunity, I was lucky enough in 2008, I, I got the chance to go to Uganda and distribute some of Catherine's nets that she raised money for, to be able to come home and have those real stories real moms who we talked about, those real moms where I said, no, you sit down, you rest your feet and put your feet up. I'm going to hang this net up for you so that tonight your family sleeps tight without worrying about mosquitoes. So incredibly powerful. So if you don't have that opportunity to, to get that experience, talk to someone who has because you'll be able to get that passion from them and share it in their story. So those are just a couple of the things that we've been able to do to broaden, to expand, um, to be able to continue. Eight years is a lot of years. You know, you have to you know look for new things, um, but don't hesitate to um, to be bold, to use your passion, to use your heart, whatever it is that's driving you to um, to continue on this mission and this campaign. I'll hand it back to Margo. <laughs> So, so you've heard how to make it personal. One way that you can make it visual is on our online store. We have bed nets where you can, um, with a $10 donation of nothing but nets, uh, get a bed net uh, display that you can hang up and show people exactly what it looks like. Um, we can help you create a proposal to take to local businesses, a simple little thing that has a specific ask in it for them to get involved. Um, and then, uh, like I said, asking for that specific amount by a specific deadline is what's really going to help move things forward. Last thing that's really important to remember is to recognize and celebrate. Make sure every donor is getting thanked in some way, even if it's just an automatic thank you from you and a handshake, or if it's you know asking somebody or, or sending them a note afterward. I like to send handwritten notes to our donors whenever I possibly can, and I get help from a lot of our team to do that. We call people at the end of the year just to say, you know what, you made a difference this year. You really helped us, and that's really, we're grateful for that. Um, share your successes with us. We'll post it up on our blog. Uh, we always need more content. So the more that you can send us, the more we can inspire others to do fundraisers. And then finally, let us uh, help keep your donors informed. If you send us the list of your donors and their emails, we can not only get them credit uh, for the donations that they're making, but we can also make sure that they're continuing to hear about updates about what's going on with the fight against malaria. Um, so, uh, you know, if you have any quick questions, you can uh, find me out at the cause marketing table, and I will be happy to chat with you about that. But therein concludes the five easy steps of fundraising. Linda's going to wrap up real quick, and then we're going to toss it over to the social media team. Perfect. I wanted to leave you with um, just a few final thoughts. We talked about never underestimating small. Um, we talk about recognition, too. Never, ever underestimate small. Catherine was five when this started, and I, it was such a, such a lesson for me to never underestimate what a young person can do. In our travels, after years of going to churches, we used to always pull up to churches and go, yeah, it's a big church. We're going to make lots of, we're going to raise lots of funds today. There was one time we went to a church in Malvern, Pennsylvania, and we pulled up, and the church was this tiny little shack thing, and I was like, whew, and Catherine said, mom, this is going to be a really light day. <laughs> and and we, I walked in and thought, wow, and we're here for like four hours. We're here for a couple services. We're just going to make the best of it. But in my head, I thought some negative thoughts. And we walked in, I'm not kidding, like 17 people in the pew. And I was like, wow, 
We're really giving up a lot of hours. You know, I'm going to be honest with you, because t- after doing this for a lot of years, sometimes you're like, I could do a lot of other things with these hours. And we walked in here. It turns out that that church by far rallied the most. That church was the one who called the, the New York Times and got us on the front page of the New York Times because so many people were touched by what we said. And that church, to this day, every single year calls me for about 100 bed net gift certificates and says, we're rallying, we still have more and more and more. Our message lasted the longest at the smallest church. Never, ever, ever underestimate small. And recognition is so, so important. A verbal thank you, a handshake, a hug, is so awesome. Just thanking people for joining you. What we do is we always write a letter. Um, we, I usually get it from the United Nations Foundation because they always send me thank you, really nice thank you letters, and I usually copy and paste a little bit, showing the countries that are that we're we're affecting. But what I do is I make my kids. I make because they're not happy about it because we have to do a lot of them. I make them individually sign the letter, um, and we write little messages on them. And usually at the holiday time, it's a lot of them. But people always come back and say, "Gosh, the fact that you hand sign that it just meant so much. We just really." feel like you're with us in this fight. So the recognition is really important. Um, but never underestimate small. And I think this room you know, is, is a, a testament to that. So thank you.